to share with you today. I had a couple of dreams yesterday, and uh, I want to share one of them with you. Uh, I believe it's it's a warning, and um, you know the Lord gives us dreams and visions as warnings and uh, or or encouragements. I had one a warning; the other was a great encouragement. I'll, I'm going to make a video on that one, but. Um, what it was, was that I was looking down at New York City, and in my mind I was thinking almost as if it was like a preview or a test. I was thinking, um, let's see how New, how New York would take an uh, earthquake almost as if I was being shown it or something. And then there was like a brick wall right in front of me. And I remember like kind of touching the brick and saying to myself, well, New York is a lot of brick. And I would, you know, touch the brick. I said, it, you know, brick crumbles. It's not gonna do very well. And, um, <clears throat> and that, that was the dream, and I thought that was very, you know, very unusual for me. I mean, I, I really, um, <laughs> you just know when dreams are from God, you know? And I've, of course, I've prayed about it, and, um, and the Lord led me to, uh, to, to look up some things. And it's interesting because, um, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing the way the Lord often leads me back to something to do with the rapture. I mean, because that's what time it is. And <clears throat> um, I'll, so I, I'll, I will redo this and show you what I mean. In the word, stone signifies truth. Therefore, brick, because it is made by man, signifies falsity. For brick is stone artificially made. That brick has the signification may be further seen from the following passages. And here's Isaiah. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a refractory people that walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts, sacrificing in gardens and burning incense upon bricks. And that's Isaiah 65, 2 and 3. And it goes on, there's a lot of um, other examples. Um, this one really was interesting. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 60 and 9 and 10 says, For the elation and pride of heart of Ephraim and of the inhabitant of Samaria, they say the bricks have fallen down, but we will build with hewn stone. Does that sound familiar? You know, I, I remember Jonathan Kahn and all that he said and how when the World Trade Centers fell, um, you know, Mr. President <clears throat> did a little speech about that and, um, you know, indicating the pride, you know, we're gonna rebuild it better than it was, basically was his point. So no need for God in that case, which was the implication. So, um, so, what it, you know, what it led me to thinking of <clears throat> was the scripture that says, you know, um, well, like First Peter 2 talks about how you, we, those in Christ are living stone. We're living stone. And, you know, the scripture that talks about um, Hebrews 12, 27 says, And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things <clears throat> that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. In other words, the day's coming where God's going to shake everything he can, and that which uh, cannot be shaken will remain, and that which can be shaken will fall and crumble like the bricks. 
And, you know, the Lord was showing me how, you know, in, in New York, and I did live there a couple times, <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's the most amazing city, you know, it has everything, you know, you walk down the street, you could, there's your aroma of five different countries cooking dinner, and you got Chinatown, Italian town, you know, every, every nationality is there, you know, you could, you know, <clears throat> to the senses, to the, to the world, to the natural mind, it's an amazing city. And I remember, like, after I was, came to Christ and got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, I noticed that when I would go back there, it's like I didn't see the sensational attraction anymore. You know what I saw instead? <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but it's just the truth. You know, instead of being caught up in all the, the amazing senses of, of the place, I, I would, <clears throat> I'd be like freaking out seeing demons on the subway. Because once you're filled with the Spirit, you see things differently. So the things of the world are totally, I mean, New York is the center of the world system, the things of the world that captivate your senses. You know, those who love the world would love New York. I never felt the same again after I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I never felt the same going there again. You know, um, so, <clears throat> you know, New York is built on bricks. It's, it's built on bricks. And it will crumble, unfortunately, because so much of it is, is built without, you know, without the leading of the, of the Lord God, without Jesus, the Messiah, you know, with no regard to him. Of course, I'm not saying, you know, <clears throat> no one there's a believer. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, thank God there are. In fact, um, Times Square Church, with, um, I was looking at these scriptures, and I was surprised to see that David Wilkerson came up while I was looking at these scriptures, and there he was holding down, you know, Times Square. I went to his church a few times, um, <clears throat> you know, but that's, you know, the majority of the city is, it's very, you know, I'm sorry, but it's very heathen, it's, it's, it's very worldly, you know, and the Bible says, you know, you will hate, the, the world will hate you and you'll hate the world, and, and because the Spirit of Christ is contrary to the things of the world. So, um, that scripture also led me to Matthew 7, 24, okay, and that one is, again, here we go straight back, interesting, okay. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Okay, it wasn't brick, it was rock. Jesus is the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does them, not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and, and great was its fall. So, you know, we see here that <clears throat> building your house on the rock means you build your, you build your house on following and obeying the word of God. And if you haven't built your house on the rock, you built your house in the sand, which would be like the bricks in this case, not adhering to the word of God and the things of God. And um, so, and what I noticed in this, which is interesting, did you notice that he talks about the foolish man and the wise man? It goes right back to Matthew 25, the foolish and wise bridesmaids. And you know, the whole thing is very connected. So, <clears throat> um, you know, this is a warning, you know, I believe to New York City, Manhattan, but I also believe that it's, it's another warning and admonition to everyone out there to just remember that, 
you know, if you build your house on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and, uh, you know, whatever, come, whatever comes, you will stand. That's a promise of God. But if you have not, you will crumble. And <clears throat> so there's really no need to fear of anything if you've built your house on the rock. You know, the promises of God are solid. They're rock solid, you know. Um, everything else is a crumbling brick, and that's all it's worth. So, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to give you that dream. I want to just admonish you and to, um, you know, get back on track if you've gotten off track. Get close to the Lord. Um, don't be a foolish bridesmaid. Uh, the Bible warns against that. There will be foolish bridesmaids. There will be wise. And uh, we want to be a wise one who, who Jesus lets in that door. Okay, so um, come to Christ if you haven't. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he is the son of God, you shall be saved. Believe it. It is the truth. It is not too late to get saved if you are alive right now it's not too late to get saved and you don't want to bypass an opportunity once you've heard it because there is <clears throat> consequences for not being saved and that means hell awaits those who refuse the lord and um he loves you so much he loves you so much you if you knew how much he loved you you would never you would never say no. So um, I'm telling you, he does. And uh, so God bless all of you. I'm going to give you a dream I had, uh, the other dream I had. And, um, you know, just please, this is a serious time we're in right now. We don't, you know, stuff could go down you know, fast, we, just suddenly, you know. It, it, actually, the Bible says it will be sudden destruction, sudden destruction when they say peace and safety. So um, don't put it off, okay? All right, so um, love you all. God bless each and every one of you. And uh, may the peace of God guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I'll see you soon.